I'm Mercy Salinas and thanks for visiting DiscountLowVoltage.com's YouTube channel. Now today our good buddy Ron with Ideal Industries is going to talk to us about cable TV splitter loss. Now don't forget to visit his YouTube channel at YouTube slash Ron Kipper Datacom. Now uh, let's check it out. Hello and welcome back to another segment of Terminating Low Voltage Cables. I'm Ron with Ideal and again welcome to my shop. Now in this segment we're going to cover cable TV splitter laws. In an earlier segment I talked about cable TV basics, look it up on the channel. And we basically uh, told you at that point we want to buy uh, one gigahertz frequency splitters that are bidirectional and analog uh, capable so they're good, uh, in good, good quality splitters. And things should just work fine. Now when you look at the signal loss caused by splitters, it's uh, fairly basic in, in, in if, you, if you think about it. And so, and I don't care if it's a good two-way splitter or a bad two-way splitter, two-way splitter does what it does. It takes a signal uh, that comes into the two-way and then creates two, ex two ports and basically will take the incoming power and chop it in half. So half the signal strength ends up over here, half the signal strength ends up over here. And if it's a one gig splitter, we still get the five to one gigahertz frequency range, but just again, half the power. So it takes 100% of something coming in the front door. And I, again, I don't know what that signal strength is per se. We'll talk about that in a minute. And it chops it in half. So this side over here will get about 50%, probably a little under that. And this side here will get somewhere under 50% of whatever came in the front door. Now, one of the things you'll notice on splitters, um, if, especially on the better quality ones, they'll have numbers on each of the ports. And the numbers indicate the signal loss of, at, at that port uh, that the splitter has. And we'll use that number when we start figuring out, you know, do we have enough signal to add an outlet room or don't we? And we can talk about that maybe a little later. Um, so this dB number is important to it. And it'll say so many dBs. Now, the dB uh, is... Uh, an acronym we use for measuring signal strength in the cable TV world and we actually measure dB per millivolt uh, and I think it's kind of interesting when you look at your cable system today you know you get you hundreds and hundreds of channels and you get that high-speed internet and that digital phone coming down this wire and you know have you ever taken a wire that's plugged into the outlet and you got the end of it here stripped and you know take your finger I got a stick to <laughs> see if you feel anything here well, you're not going to feel anything there because these guys work on very small amounts of voltage. As a matter of fact, millivolts of signal strength. But we work at very high frequencies. We talked about working at, you know, 1 gigahertz in frequency or maybe 500 megahertz, whatever. That means the little signals in the cable are turning on and off at 500 million times a second, which is real, really, really fast. Uh, but we measure the signal strength with something called a decibel. And... Um, Anybody want to take a stab at who the Dessa Bell might be named after? And um, if you guessed Alexander Graham Bell, you'd be correct, because obviously uh, he was the guy messing around in the 20s trying to figure out signal loss in wires. So trust me, it's so many dBs. Now, what the numbers basically mean to you, and a lot of people say, think that if I said you had zero dB of signal, that you would have no signal, and that's not true. You do have signal. We measure, that's a benchmark for us. We, that's a reference point. We measure up and down from. And actually, uh, the FCC says if I took a meter and uh, DB loss meter and measured the signal strength at the outlet of the room, it ought to be around zero dB. And uh, that's because that's what, the, again, the TVs are kind of designed around somewhere. Maybe zero or just a little bit above is good for them. Now, so we measure up and down from zero. Now, the numbers mean this. They, if I have a 3 dB gain, in other words, I'm gaining signal strength like an amplifier, uh, that means we doubled in power. Okay, if you have a three dB loss, that means you've had, you're, you've got half, so you got fifty percent of what whatever came in the front door. Six dBs means that you're four times hotter, and a six dB drop that means that you've only got twenty five percent left over, so you've lost you know seventy five percent of the signal. Uh, and ten dBs means that we are ten times hotter and a 10 dB drop means that 90% is gone or you have 10% of it left. So that's kind of what the dB numbers mean to us. So we know that this is at least a 3 dB drop. And because of the loss of the splitter itself, and there is some loss caused by this, and it's also based on frequency too, uh, it's going to be, it might say 3 point something, 3.3 or 5 or 7. I'm going to tell you the standards say it ought to be somewhere under 4. So I'm going to tell you most two-way splitters 
lose around 4 dB a signal is what I'm going to do. And uh, again, I'm going to add and subtract these dB numbers when I go about figuring out is there enough signal at the end of the day at the outlet in the room. Now, a three-way is very simply done by taking a two-way a two and then adding another two-way to it on one of these ports. So now we've taken this 50% and we've chopped it in half again. So these ports down here are getting 20 to 25% of whatever came in uh, through the front door and the, the, since it's gone through a second splitter these ports have doubled in strength or uh, in loss I should say so 2 4 dB drop adds up to be 8 dB so now when I look at the outside of the splitter and I look at the little ports in, on a three-way one of the ports will say you know 4 or pretty close to that and the other two ports will say you know 7 or 8 on the outside so the longest run of the house, where should it go? It should actually go on this one that says four, because that is where the most strength is. So, um, uh, but, and unfortunately, a lot of people see four, eight, and eight, and they think the bigger number is better, and that's where they put it, okay? Now, to make a four-way splitter and look at the loss, we basically add a third, a third two-way in here, okay? Now we've got an extra two ports. They're also getting 20 or 25% of whatever came in the front door. And these two ports will also say 8 dB. So I'll tell you that a two-way splitter loses 4 dB a signal. A four-way will lose 8 dB a signal. And you can certainly go out and buy larger splitters, that you know, 8, uh, 12, uh, even bigger, out there in the market and use them. And you know, the question will be, if I took that home and used it, would it actually work? And the answer is, I don't know. <laughs> You have to go home and try it. It all depends on the signal strength on the side of your home, to be true for you. And um, when you, we can always make, by the way, bigger splitters uh, with what we have in the stores. If we wanted to, you know, make an eight-way splitter, I would simply sell somebody a two-way splitter and a little bit of wire and two four-way splitters and create my own eight-way splitter, okay? And again, when I look at the loss in this, these splitters, I know two-way splitters lose uh, four dB of signal. And I know the four-ways lose eight dB of signal, okay? So if I look at a signal passing through uh, this and going through really any of the ports, they're going to lose a total of 12 dB of signal. Just in the uh, splitters uh, themselves, okay? And again, will it work? I don't know. Uh, it all depends on how hot that signal is coming in the side of the home. Now, when I look at that signal coming in the side of the home, and by the way, you can make bigger and bigger, bigger splitters if you want to. Just make a three-way feed, three, four, two four-ways, or three four-ways, and you got 12. Uh, but will it work? And, the, and this is how we go about figuring this. I'm going to tell you that you ought to get somewhere in the neighborhood, if things are working right, between plus 10 to 15 dB of signal coming in the side of the home. Your cable companies are giving you so much signal strength on the side of the home, you should not have to worry about amplification. And say they get, did give me 15 dB here coming in the side of the home. We know through this scenario that we're losing uh, 12. Uh, DB. So in this case, uh, very small amounts of wires, we would have 3 dB left over falling out of an outlet in a room. Uh, and I'm going to say at the outlet in a room, you, you're going to want somewhere around 0 to, to 5 at a, at a, it, it, to be in a perfect spot. Uh, depending on the quality of the TV, and this has a lot to do with it, is the quality of the tuner in your TV. Some tuners can see, you know, minus 10, minus 15 dB MV and be fine. And the newer digital tuners are more sensitive than the older ones. So if the, one question might be is how old is your TV? If that sucker is 20 or 30 years old, uh, it probably, those normally wanted to see somewhere around 5 to 15 dBMV. So uh, one of the questions is, you know, what kind of TV you have has a lot to do with this. And then another uh, help when you start figuring out, you know, is, what is the loss, um, it, it, we also add the loss in on the wiring itself. And I'm going to tell you that RG6 coax loses somewhere between 4 to 6 dB every 100 feet, okay? So 
if I'm going to say 4 dB, uh, a 50 footer would lose 2 dB, a 200 footer would lose 8 dB. You can kind of get the idea of how we start adding up that dB number as well. And again, we subtract all those from that number on the side. Now, this whole 10 to 15, um, <laughs> there's a lot of reasons why it may not be that high. Um, a, the cable's been under the ground a real long time. It probably lives in more than you think it is. Um, you know, the landscape guy came out to your house last week, and he put that tree, you know, here's the pedestal in the backyard going out to your home, and he put that tree exactly where he told him to, right there. <laughs> now, uh, and he cut your cable in half. Now, uh, uh, you'll find a lot of really great landscaping people, but, um, you know, uh, some of them might just splice that cable, put it back in the ground, and... Uh, uh, hopefully they've done a good job of doing that. You can certainly do that, but uh, make sure you use a, a quality connection. Make sure it doesn't get any water or moisture in the cabling. Um, but uh, So there's a lot of reasons why it may not be 10 to 15, but that's how we go about figuring out what the splitter loss is uh, and uh, how much signal do we want in a TV and um, gives us some insights as to how you go about helping a customer and uh, figuring out what kind of splitters they have. And I uh, always love the folks that uh, are out of two-way splitters, so they use some four-ways. Well, they went into another room, and they got a bunch of these four-ways, so they used another one on that, and before long, they've got a bunch of signal loss in that system. So, there you go. Uh, that's a little bit about signal loss on cable TV splitters. Uh, I'm Ron with Ideal Industries, and we'll see you next time. Hey, thanks a lot, Ron. You really helped uh, explain that. Pretty good. Uh, I definitely learned something from that. Don't forget to also subscribe to the Ron Kipper Datacom channel and also to the DiscountLowVoltage.com channel for more videos on how-tos, uh, fiber, racks, pretty much uh, anything networking. Thank you.